Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. As you would expect, the month of January is a little bit slow as everyone's coming back from the holidays, but there were a couple of cool things that came out in the last week. We're gonna take a look at a few of them. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Marco Russo over at SQL BI has got a blog post looking at why would Analyze in Excel be slower than if I'm doing something in Power BI. So the example is a matrix visual inside of Power BI Desktop versus a pivot table inside of Excel going to the same data set. As always, Marco walks through exactly what's going on here and compares the queries from both using DAX Studio. And this all comes down to a feature of DAX called Fusion. There was a blog post a while back from Phil Seamark that I called out where he talked about Fusion, what it was, how it worked. And this is the reason why it's gonna be slower because MDX doesn't utilize that Fusion concept. Marco does a great job of walking through this. He's also got a call out at the bottom of the blog asking you to vote an item up to get the product team to implement Fusion from an MDX perspective. Paul Turley's got a blog post looking at the new activity log API from a Power BI perspective. I'm actually gonna have a video on this in the near future, walking through the different options, but he does a great job of getting you started with this using the actual API itself. You can either use the raw REST API to do this, or you can use the PowerShell commandlets to do it as well. And he walks through what that PowerShell commandlet command would be. A couple of things to note about this, the activity log APIs, they only go back 30 days worth of data as compared to 90 days from the Exchange Online PowerShell commandlets or the seven day window that the Office 365 management APIs give you. But the nice thing about this is that you don't have to be a global admin of your tenant. You can just be a Power BI admin and go get that activity log. And it's only for the Power BI data. So you're not gonna have to worry about everything else that typically your admins don't want you to do. So Paul's got you covered. Check out this blog post if you're interested in using it and to see how to go about doing that. Links, as always, down in the description below, along with links for everything in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. A little more on the admin front, Brett Powell's got a blog post looking at how do you actually go catalog who's got a Power BI Pro license with inside of your organization. There are a couple of different ways to do this. He looks at how to do this from the admin center perspective from the Office 365 or Microsoft 365 admin center. And also he looks at how you can do this from a PowerShell perspective. Now you may think this is Power BI, but this is really the Office 365 Azure Active Directory infrastructure. And so you're gonna use the PowerShell commandlets for those items to actually go get it. But Brett's got you covered. If you are an admin and you're interested in doing this, he's got a script for you in this blog post. Go check it out, links down below. Jason Cantrell over at Blue Granite has got a blog post looking at the key influencer visual inside of Power BI. He labels it as a deep dive. Really, he's specifically looking at the linear regression capabilities of the key influencer visual and walks through what linear regression is, how it works, and then how that's applied to the key influencer visual and how you can take advantage of it. He also calls out that there is a difference between the algorithm that the key influencer visual is doing compared to like if you were to do linear regression from a R or Python or Excel or something of that nature. The Power BI key influencer visual uses a proprietary fast linear regression algorithm. And so there are gonna be differences between that. So if you're trying to compare apples to apples, it may look a little different. So just be aware of that. But Jason's got you covered. All the details in this blog post, if you're into that, if you wanna know more from a statistics perspective, go check it out down in the comments below. Miguel Myers has a video, actually he's got a bunch of videos for you, focused around Power BI visualizations. The video I'm specifically linking here is his latest video, which is three tips to control chart grid lines. But he's got other videos there too that you should definitely check out. Miguel Myers works along with Chris Hamill on the Power BI CAT team and what they work on is visualizations inside of Power BI. So they do report design and all sorts of cool stuff. They constantly blow people's minds with some of the things they can do. If you saw the latest sample report that was put out on the Power BI Desktop Samples GitHub repo, Miguel was instrumental in creating that sample. If you're looking for ideas to level up your report design game, definitely check out this video along with other videos on his YouTube channel and subscribe to his channel to get all of the latest videos that he's cranking out. 
All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. Let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.